Hello! <laughs> I know it's not been a lot of content being released lately here in the channel. That's because I'm working on the next video for the Let's Make a Platform series. It's about pre-production and game design. So it's, take a, it's taking longer than I thought or intended to. But just so we don't enter in a hiatus here in the channel, let's make a quick video about how we can make selectable objects. Uh, with this system, we will be able to make exclusive selections, meaning that once you select an object, the other, uh, the previous object will be deselected. And also how you can use, using the same system, you can create inclusive selections, meaning that you can select an object and keep selecting objects as you want to. So without further ado, let's get to the tutorial, right? The first thing that we are going to do here is to use an RHD. Let's rename it to Selection RHD. And the reason for that is that RHDs have a very interesting uh, virtual method that we can use to detect when there is a input from mouse inside of the collision shapes. So let's create a new script. I'll use a building script here. And the first thing that we are going to do is to create a signal to communicate when this area got selected. So let's say selected selection to go. It passed uh, its current selection state. So selection. Next, we are going to export a variable to tell if this RHD is exclusive. So that it's kind of like a flag. We can toggle this on or off based on our needs. So let's say that by default it is exclusive. And then uh, we are going to export another variable that's going to be the selection action. This is the action that we are going to use to, de to detect whether we should select or not this error based on inputs. So for instance, I have here in my project, project settings, a input action that's called select, that is the left button of the mouse. So I'm going to use that select for my uh, implementation. And also we are going to have a variable that communicates the current state of the selection of this object, of this error to d So by default, it will start deselected. And we are going to encapsulate this variable into a set selected method because we are going to execute some procedures before we actually just, um, in the meantime, before changing the, the selection because, for instance, we are going to emit the signal uh, when the selection changed, when the selection state changed. So uh, let's implement this set selected method. Selected. It receives a selection. Okay, set get. The first thing that we are going to do is to check if the selection is true, because uh, if this selection is true, we need to make to check if this object is exclusive or not, so that we can deselect all other objects and make only this one selected, right? So we are going to make a method that is called make exclusive. Just create it down here, and for now, uh, let's just leave it blank. We are going to include these objects, the selected objects, into a selected group, node group, because this will make it easier for us to deselect all other objects if this is an exclusive selection. So we are going to add that to group selected. Otherwise, we are going to remove it from the group. Only then we are going to set the selected to the select selection value that we are going to receive here. Uh, here in this make exclusive, we are going to do the following. We are going to make a group call, get tree dot call group on this selected group using this set selected method, passing false. This will make so that all the objects that are in this group will be deselected if if this one is selected. But actually, if it is not selected we are going to return and then we can just make this group call straight. Uh, then we are going to emit the signal that the selection stugo passing the selected. And to check if the, the selection happened or not, we are going to use this virtual function called input 
event. Note that here we have two inputs, right? We have the first input. This is a general use input handling for all nodes. But the second one, this input event with a viewport as the first argument, is what we use for RSTD for detect if, uh, if an event happened inside the collision shapes. So this is the one that we want to. So what we are going to do here is to check if the event if the event is action press the action that we uh, use here and if it is we're going to call this method toggling the selection uh, what this means is that uh, we are going to pass a value that is the opposite of the current value of the current selected state so set selected is going to be not selected so if it is selected it will not be selected and if it not if it's not selected it will be selected right and this should do it for our selection rhd uh, create folder selection rhd and let's save it here all right so we have the the backbone of our system and how we can use it so let let me open a player here. So the way that we can use this RHD is selection RHD is by using uh, attaching them to a, an, the object that we want to be selected. We can add a collision shape to, to tell uh, where it should detect inputs that, that are going to trigger the selection. Uh, we can also just duplicate the very uh, collision shape of the, the player itself. And the way that we use that is by connecting its signal to a method in this uh, in, in the object that we want to be selected. So using that, uh, I'm going to connect here. I already have one here, so I'm going to copy that. Let me just fold everything else. This is a simple player. It has movement, but the thing that we are going to uh, t to go on and off based on the selection is the ability to handle inputs here so we are going to to go off the unhandled input callback from this player based on its selection state so we receive the selection state here and we can simply set unhandled input based on this selection value and also uh, there is a label here that tells if this object is selected or not so we can to go its visibility based on this selection value as well. So label dot visible is going to be selection. Save and let's go back to our levels. Level exclusive. Uh, note that we can toggle on and off the exclusive parameter, the exclusive flag, using the very inspector itself. So this is how we control if an error is exclusive. So if it is, if it should be deselected based on the selection of other error, or if it is inclusive. So we can toggle off that if we want that every error um, can be selected at the same time. Uh, there has been a small mistake here. Uh, this is this is wrong. This should check if it is exclusive. So this is what actually toggles if this object is exclusive exclusive or inclusive so i uh, made a small mistake here back to the test here we should have uh, inclusive exclusive and if we change that to false these objects should be inclusive yeah so that's it thank you so much for watching Keep developing and until the next time. This video was brought to you by my patrons. Thank you so much for your support.